Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a follow-up service call for a Johnson Controls water-cooled heat pump. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. We are back at this massive Johnson Controls unit. You can see this is a two-circuit system. This is a water-cooled heat pump and we are here to replace the actuator. As you can see, there's not one here. We're gonna put on a Belimo and we're gonna keep things simple with the wiring. First thing we're gonna wanna do is shut down the water and drain this thing out. All right, there's a strainer here. We need a pair of channel locks and we're gonna drain it with this bucket. We can try to get in there, yeah, tight spot. We might need something smaller. Loosen that up. I think it's real tight. Oh, that thing leaks. Yeah, that's why it's like that. A little bit of water passing through. Is, th is there a valve on this thing? There is. Valve doesn't really hold that well. All right. While we're letting it drain out, let's let's sand this down. Maybe maybe like right here. It's good. It's just the sticker is in our way. Whatever. Let's sand it down. Thinking of putting a no slip coupling, and that should solve our issue. Prep this, get this sanded down beforehand. I'm gonna cut this area, spin this valve off, and put it back. Got this really cool close quarters cutter. This thing is a beast. This is the Wheeler Rex model number 4992. Cuts from quarter inch to two and three eighths. So I finished draining. Let's cut this up. Might get a little water. All right, I got this started. And we introduced air in here. So that's why it's draining here now. I'm gonna keep that bucket there. It's all coming out through there. I might have to change this with the no slip coupling. Cause even if I take this out, how are we gonna, if I try to back this out, it's gonna be in this pipe unless we can move this a little, but I don't wanna mess with that. So let's figure this out. All right, I'm gonna cut another section of this so we can back out this valve. And what we're gonna do is put in a new two inch male pipe adapter and a no slip coupling. And before you leave a comment saying, you should just put a union. Yeah, well, I don't have one. So it is what it is. We just need to get this going. Okay. Now, let's back this out. I think we probably could back it out just through here. All right. Definitely gonna need some leverage right now. Let's see what we can do. And we got multiple calls today, so let's try to get this going. Chris, you're gonna hold here. Yep. You know what? Watch out. You're gonna hold like this and go more upwards. And I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna try to spin it off from here. Yeah. Instead of taking off things twice. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. careful, careful. Don't move that. Don't break that. Sure. Let me do the moving. Just sure. go against me. Gotcha. Alright, hold on. Yep. There we go. Nice. There we go. Okay. Let's get this thing out. If anything, we 
could just reuse that fitting mm -hmm. for the new valve. It's the same yeah. size, they're both threaded. I'm gonna keep it simple with a spring return valve. out and there we go let's just clear up some of this stuff here so everything is nice and neat and we put in our new valve and we got to do it smart because we're working with a tight space all right while this gets cleaned up i'll show you guys so there's a two circuit system the two fans are up here and we actually have emergency heat we got a hot water coil here this looks pretty good and look we got a balema over here but this is not a two inch pipe look you see how they expanded this is an inch and a quarter pipe anyways that's cool and this thing is controlled by bms we got a big strainer here oh look the valves are closed you don't want the heat coming on but the bms system for some reason the heat was coming on instead of cooling. It was energizing this, so. And this valve wasn't opening, so let's see what happens. All right, that's all cleaned up. What we're gonna do is put some Teflon tape around here. And then what we can do is put pipe dope on top of it, and we should be good. The pipe that was cut, what we're gonna do is we're gonna deburr the inside and the outside of the pipe so we have a nice clean connection we got to take off the actuator to spin the valve on take off this phillips screw make sure everything is in the same place and then we can pop this off let's take out this screw okay should be able to pop this off. Let's just make sure we get every, put everything back in its same place. And like that, we put some pipe dope on here, spin this on. But we might need to get this one on first, and it's aligned with this, get it perfectly cut, and get it going. Got a new male pipe adapter here. And what I'm gonna do is actually put some of this on top of the threads. And this is going to help seal it up. I'm going to do that on both sides for threads. All right, try to apply it neat. And you can wipe off any excess. What I'm going to do is get this on here. Tighten this up the best I can. I wish they had a vise here. They don't. I'm going to try to get this in. And then we can spin on the rest. But we also got to cut this. The size have it already in there while we spin it and hopefully we're gonna be all right all right so let's try to tighten this thing up and do our best all right let's get this started got christian cutting the pipe i'm gonna stick it in here and try to get it going but i don't think we have much slack this is a no slip coupling when you're working with tight spaces you could just slip it right through because then it really is not going to fit if this doesn't work i might need to add a second coupling unfortunately but it is what it is so i'm trying to put this pipe in spin it on hopefully this lines up if there's too much of a gap it might not work so a second coupling will do it when and just stuff it right in and just put in another no slip coupling and that will work we'll see what happens unfortunately there's not much slack here unless we take off this union and maybe pull this out not sure we want it to be like this but i don't see how i can get this on there unless i loosen this up i don't know if i want to mess with all that let me figure something out that's not gonna work so let me just start this valve with two no slip couplings. 
I should probably work. All right, let's just get this on there. Just not go too crazy. Because if you over tighten this, I've seen valves actually crack. If anything, maybe one more spin and that's it. It don't have to be too crazy. We're gonna figure this out. Let's just finish this, make this straight, and this part is gonna be done. Right there, that's it. We just gotta figure out how we're gonna do the rest. If I gotta cut it again, whatever it is what it is and we'll figure this out let me set this up i loosened up the four screws here and this clamp and because it's flexible line i got a little bit of play on this so look at that i'm gonna stick that in and now we're perfectly aligned and we slip this slip coupling back let's make sure this is perfectly aligned right there See where that cut is, right where my finger is. Now we're in the middle. And that right there, it's a beautiful thing. Got this monster here today, this is two inch. So, from here, let's get it in. And all the way, even, let's press it up. Okay, definitely deforms the pipe, but I've seen this happen on a different job site and there was no leaks. Okay. And this job is complete as far as piping. All right, let's pray we have no leaks. Oops. All right, now it's in. Okay. Jesus, man. Definitely want to open these slowly. Anyways, they're both open. We definitely have water up to here. This valve is currently closed. Let's put the actuator on. Let's see if this thing works. Here's our actuator. It's set on the body just like that. We got these four little indents. It goes into this holes and this fits in here perfectly. Let's just get that in place. Okay. And then we just tighten down this screw. Should go onto the shaft over there. Starting to get tight. And there we go. From here, we only have two wires. So it's 24 volts to power it, and then it's a spring return. All right, guys, everything's good to go. I left this little piece here. I think it's some sort of locking mechanism. Gotta look at some research. But anyways, right now it shows this is unlocked. And there's a lock here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open this valve right now. You can see I'm spinning this. You hear water. So it's starting to open. Slide it down so it's probably fully open. Just about that lock, and then you can close this, and this stays in that position. Water is currently propped open. Honestly, this thing looks great, nice and shiny. You can see that little new piece in there. And as far as the wiring, it's two wires, you need 24 volts. So, where does this come out of? So coming in, there's like a little terminal strip here. If you see the, like with the blue terminal strip, I got one on common. And on the bottom, you can't really see, but it's an X1. And that is by following the wiring diagram. Maybe something has to go through or whatever, maybe to help out with this board. I'm not exactly sure, I gotta look at the wiring diagram. But let's put it back where 
the wide wiring diagram says it should be and we should be all right gonna unlock it and right there it's going back it's closing we're gonna have to come back because the building is controlled by bms building automation building systems management and for some reason the heat is coming on with the cooling so it doesn't open up this valve so we'll be back with that company we'll work together and let's get these settings right all right guys we're closing it up if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week i'll catch you all next time Thank you.